All right, welcome back to Our Tax and Daughters. And today we're going to talk about the Czechoslovakian 98-22. This is the next in our series of rifles in between the war, world wars. So this was used in Czechoslovakia for roughly two years before it was replaced with the CZ-24. As we can see, it has a Gravera 98 style sling and hole there. Your Mauser bolt take down. Your standard Mauser straight bolt. You'll see that's got a brand new bolt in there. Had to do a repair. It's back to functioning again. Got your cut out through your thumb. There's your uh, stripper clip bridge. We're going to come up and look here. And there we go. We got a nice check borneo uh cartouche where you want to call it into this into the upper receiver there this is a model 98 action it's long so it's the same as Gravera 98 matter of fact there's a little bit of history on this and we're going to get into it right now as we go up here we're going to go up to the letters or up to the ladder site you know it doesn't have the roller coaster site like the world war one german Gravera 98s did um, because this is updated for the new Spicer bullet and it is the, the normal sight that we would see on just about all Mausers after World War I. Also you notice that the letters are marked in Arabic or Ottoman script because this is a Ottoman contract rifle. We'll come up here you got your standard sling swivel Come up all the way. This is a long rifle. There's your, mount, your uh, barrel band at the end there. There's a little small K98 cleaning rod that got stuck in there. And your front sight post, typical of the era. And uh, so these were the updates to the model, to the Gravera 98. Because during um, World War One and after uh, World War One, as war reparations, Germany had to sell, manufacture um, rifles for the new Czechoslovakian nation. So, um, we all know how good um, CZ is. So, uh, of course, this is a CZ rifle, even though it was a VZ then. Um, and, and then the Czechs have a good armament history. So, they got the machinery, and they started producing these rifles in their configuration which is the 98 slash 22 22 has the updates for well the final updates to the model 98 until they went to the K98 so it's got the new update sites a little bit more history is is that you could order the, so these only served two years with the Czechoslovakian army before they went to the CZ or the VZ 24 rifle which will be uh, up next in our series um, it's very uh, similar to the Colombian rifle that we've done. So, anyway, you could get these in 8mm Mauser. This gun is chambered in 8mm Mauser. You can get them chambered in 7mm Mauser and 7.65 by 53 also known as Argentine Mauser or, the, or 7.65 Mauser cartridge. That was their main um, export cartridge um, from the turn of the century up until till the to the World War II, um, this gun has a like I said a number of updates, but the, but the main one is the rear sight. Also, side note, in a German inventory during the 1920s and 30s, and, it, and these even served up to World War II, these this pattern of rifle is also known as the Gewehr 98B. Or the 98B. The B is because it had um, the updated rear sight um, for the German Army, for the uh, Reichstag era, um, or the Weimar Republic era rifles. Because they weren't allowed to have carbines, they were allowed to have new rifles. So what new rifles they had, they went with the 98B, which would have been this pattern with the straight bolt action. Uh, you can see the Turkish, see if I can get it to 
the, the Ottoman, or other than the, the Turkish um, crescent moon right there. The, so, and then of course the Arabic. And then, but the German 98B Mauser is the same configuration as the 98 slash 22. Um, interchangeability with Gravera 98s, of course. Uh, even with K98 bolts, you can put a cold bow hand. Since this is a Turkish gun, um, there's not a lot of these in the country. The, the 98 slash 22, we usually see a lot of um, model 98 Mausers that are the or the Turkish Mausers are usually model 93s that were been converted over to eight millimeter, or they were the uh, later production based on these in Ankara in the 40s during World War II. Of course, Turkey was never a combatant during World War II. Um, it's a feasible that this gun took place in one of the Turkish-Italian battles um, in uh, in the interwar period, but I think that was before World War One. Yeah, that was before World War One. Um, yeah, so these rifles didn't see a lot of hard service. It's got great rifling in it. It is extremely uh, good to shoot. Um, not a lot of recoil because it's such a big, lengthy gun. You can look up the specs on this. So here we're going to, of course, this gun is unloaded. Uh, there we go. Standard there. We're going to, if you never know, this is the bolt stop. So you want to remove your bolt out of your Mauser. You uh, just pull that back like that. And then pull your bolt out. And then, there you go. And now you get your bolt out of the Mauser. Uh, uh, we're going to have to clean this bad boy up. It's, so, yeah, it's got a little bit of cosmoline still in it. That's what you see there. That's not rust. That's cosmoline. So you can see there, it's still got a lot of crud in it. I've actually owned this rifle for about 10 years now. And uh, every time I uh, shoot it, I get new, more and more cosmoline out of it. So maybe by the time the next 10 years comes by, I'll get all the cosmoline out of it. Um, it is all matching, which is a rarity. Uh, so, except for the bolt there, I just had to replace um, the screw, I mean. So, yeah. Nice. It is a cock on close, like all K98s. There's your flag safety. You got it up like this. You can still manipulate the bolt, as you can see. You cannot fire the gun in this position. And then all the way over to the right is your safety, and it locks the bolt down. So, that's how the bolt works. And it's got a standard military trigger. And we'll pop it over here on the other side. Uh, down here so we can get a better look at it. Just your standard run of mill VZ-98. Uh, we got some crud there on the stock we're going to take care of here in a minute. Some crud everywhere else, too. So, let's see, we'll look down right here. We got our standard sight, and if I'm not mistaken, this has got the half sight. Yes, as you see, I'm doing this. You see how this button is right here? This actually has a half a notch where you can click it a half a notch to get that fine tuning in. See how it's, you got your regular light. So it starts off at, well, I'm gonna say it's 300 meters. So 300 meters is locked in. You see how it wiggles? We go back, let's see, we go up to about seven there. All right. So, you can walk your sight in. So you can just push it on one side like that. Um, Othias over at the uh, CNR Arsenal done a whole big old 20 minute review about how this is the best uh, sight that you can get because you can walk it, dial it in, walk it in. 
so you, let me see that again show you that again so you just push on one side and you see how it's just walking its way up see that's like half right there and then that's full say we'll call that 500 meters there's 400 meters see now we're up there almost at 300 meters now we're at 300 meters now we're about 100 and or 250 something like that there we are at 2 and then 50 then 100 so that's for walking letter sites that is probably one of the best uh, sites that the um, that Peter and Paul Mauser came out with so unique site very good if you get a if you get a Mauser that you can just push one side like that or like this and see how I'm doing that and it walks itself up like that you don't have to squeeze both sides because you can squeeze both sides and make it go up but if you just do the the inc increments you can dial this rear side in see how it is not all Mausers do that not all Mausers are created equal so that's where we're at here on these beautiful well probably one of the better Turkish contract Mausers you'll see still got the World War One type sling on there um, even in uh, World War II the German 98B Mauser still had that so anyway since we are pretty much done with talking with this I've shot this rifle it definitely uh, shoots pretty good with standard uh, ball ammo and all that it's a Mauser, so you're going to get, and it's a military rifle, so you're going to get the, the, uh, you know, four to five MOA out of it at, at yardage, because it's, you know, it's not a sniper rifle. Um, I've shot, uh, vintage, uh, World War II German ammo out of it. Shoots pretty good with it. Uh, the Turkish ammo... Well, it's, it shoots better with the German stuff. Um, even firing modern hunting rounds out of it, it shoots a little bit better. You could probably get to two, two and a half MOA on a good day on an indoor range, maybe. Still a lot of fun to shoot plank with. So remember, if you if hey, if you have a 98 slash 22, because I'm gonna clean this bad boy up here in a minute. And um, let us let me know about it in the comments below. If you got a um, inner, inner war in between the World War uh, Mausers, let us know about them. what model you got. What's your favorite model between 1919 and 1939 of, of Mausers? Let us know about that. Um, if you got Turkish Mausers, let us know if you got a Turkish Mauser. Um, I know uh, Turkey is not a friendly nation to fellow Christians. And, and Jews or the Kurds themselves at least to the communist Kurds who they fight against a lot um, and you really and if you don't know the geopolitical situation about the three Kurds or the three tribes of the Kurds that are in the area of northern Iraq Syria and Turkey um, you should look that up before you comment on that the Kurds that are in northern Iraq that we supported are not the same Kurds that are in Syria or in southern Turkey. Um, I'm not going to hold, hold uh, Turkish gun manufacturers to their government's its policies. That's just crazy. Um, if you did that, then that means no one would ever own a K-98 um, rifle from World War II. No one would ever own an Italian Carcano or a Japanese Arasaka because of its um, because of the government actions with that rifle. This is an inanimate object. It only does what the person who grabs it and makes it do. It does not have its own free will like humans do. So, uh, yeah, I don't want to hear that crap in the, in the comments below because I'll just delete it. Um, I, I'm a commissure of firearms and firearms accessories, so I don't care who makes it because then you got to say, well, why are you buying Chinese uh, AKs? Like because of coronavirus, 
everyone watching this video and everyone knows that if we could get cheap Chinese AK-47s, we'd be on like flies on shit. And everybody knows it. Same way now, like we're on route on uh, Polish uh, um, random AKs that get imported, or the Yugoslavians, you know, the Yugoslavians, or or any Eastern Comblock country that produced weapons that we all like and enjoy, of Macrofs thing, uh, T T33 pistols. So you just can't hold um, that kind of standard to Turkey, uh, to the gun industry there. And uh, I'm not making excuses for them. By no means, but again, I'm not going to walk past again. It's not like there's Springfield Armory where they're trying to sell our rights out uh, right underneath us and so they can make a quick buck. Um, Turkey is probably, uh, Turkey has its problems like every other country in Europe and like the U.S. So let's just leave it at that. Um, if you don't like Turkish guns, that's fine. Just say you disagree. That's all you have to do. Don't need no big long excuse. Just say you disagree. If you like, if you like guns in general, um, rifles and, and handguns, then by God, sound off and let us know. Um, if you like uh, Czechoslovakian rifles, let us know in the comment. Let us know you're fine. Also, um, we're up to about uh, 353 in viewers, so we're getting close to our 500 giveaway. Don't forget about that. Got to be subscribed and comment on the videos to do that to get registered for that. Also, um, help us stick it to YouTube. I don't want to get into a big rant here. A lot of other people's done it, and I might do it here in a minute. Let's um, make YouTube monetize our channel, and that way they have to start buying ammo for the channel. I think that would be the great thing. We'll start getting ads. And then we'll get some ad revenue, and then I'll go and do a big old thing for the first box of ammo I get to buy from uh, a YouTube check. So let's make sure that we can stick it to the YouTubes. So like our videos, share them, comment, and most importantly, subscribe to the channel. That helps us grow. And I like to let's say I appreciate all of you guys and gals that watches our videos, comments on our videos. And subscribe to the page. Um, if we wouldn't for out without you guys, we wouldn't do a whole lot of this, and then it wouldn't be um, all as fun. Because this has become a lot of fun to me and my daughter, and one day soon my nephew. So this one more last look here at the and right there is the import marks. Just to let you know too, uh, on guns from uh, World War II and all this and that. Uh, most guns that are import, well, all guns imported into this country from after 1968, as you can see right here. Those are the import company marks. This gun was imported into the U.S., okay? That means that this gun was imported after 1968. Before 1968, you did not have to have those markings, okay? So, if somebody tells you, I got a rifle that Grandpa brought back from World War II... And it's all matching, blah, blah, blah. Even if it is all matching, somewhere on the rifle, it will have that if it was brought in after 1968. If that's not on there, then it was imported before 1968. That doesn't mean Grandpa brought it back. If there's no paperwork or documentation stating that he brought it back, or if the veteran is not alive, to say yes and sign an affidavit, I bring it back. Then it's not a war trophy, and they didn't bring it back because there's no way to prove otherwise. Now, of course, you're going to say Rick, but there are guns out there like that, and I'm going to say yes. They're very few, and they're hard to prove that they were originally bring home guns. A lot of Japanese Arasakas were that way. Now, also remember check us out over on um, Facebook, Instagram, Gun Streamer. Or Teespring, if you want to help support the channel that way. Patreon, if you want to help the channel out. And, uh, because anything we do, we're going to put right back into the channel. This is not, I'm not doing this to be, we're not doing this to become rich, because that's not our, that's not our deal. Um, we're doing this for the fun. So, anyway, just remember to subscribe to the channel and give us a big thumbs up and comment and we'll catch you guys next time and we'll probably do the cz24 next
and we'll see you there. And always remember, it costs nothing to be kind to each other and be safe.